Well, hi, everybody. We want to greet you if you're on campus or online. We are so glad that uh, you are with us today. Now, today is going to be a little bit different because we're going to handle some family business. Somebody say family business. How many of you know that the church is a family? Three of you know that. Let's try that again. Online, I hope you responded better than the bunch in here. They're still asleep. Uh, uh, Let's try again. How many of you know the church is a family? Yeah, much better. So that means you are part of that family. And, uh, uh, you know, we've just completed the Daniel fast, and uh, we're going to participate in the Lord's uh, table today. So, uh, and then from next week, we're going to uh, dive into the first part of the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, we're going to be looking at what kind of people God calls blessed. How many of you want God to call you blessed? Uh, you know, it's one thing to call yourself blessed and hashtag blessed. And, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. But we have to decide whether we want to be what Jesus said we need to be or not. That's why we are entitled this series, To Be or Not. Uh, This is our year of maturity, is our year of growth. And um, uh, we are going into our spiritual growth campaign. And as many of you know, usually we have this growth campaign in the month of September. But, uh, you know, just uh, because of everything that was happening uh, uh, last year, we just felt that we wanted to move it. And uh, we wanted to bring it to the beginning of this year and really uh, for us to engage and and get with. So so, uh, this is going to help you to go further. This is going to help you to go deeper. This is going to help you to go higher. Uh, Do I have anybody online, anybody on campus that say, I want to go higher? Does anybody want to go deeper? Does anybody want to go further than you've ever been? Then here's what you got to know. You got to do some things you haven't done. Uh, We know the the age age old saying, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting what? Different results, and uh, you can, you know, uh, some some of us, you know, we just try to row harder, but it's some some of us don't need to row at all. We just need to let God have the control. Some of us just need to be in the wrong boat. Some of us need to start swimming. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We're all at different places in our spiritual journey, but what God wants to do, He wants to take us together as a body to a specific place. So you say, what is a spiritual growth campaign? A spiritual growth campaign is where we all are focused on the same thing. Uh, The youth ministry, the children's ministry, uh, the men's ministry, the women's ministry, every ministry, the small groups, uh, year on Sunday mornings, Wednesday night, uh, whatever it is we do, it's all going to be focused on these words that Jesus said. And um, uh, uh, we're going to delve into them. We're going to look at them. We're going to understand what they mean and then how to apply them. And uh, because I don't know about where you're at, but I know where I'm at. I want to live the blessed life. But I want to live the blessed life God's way, not man's way. And uh, so uh, there are several ways that we are going to do it. So for those of you that are with us right now, as you came in, you received a card. How many of you received the card when you came in? All right. For those of you online, if you want to know where this card is, you can go uh, right to our website and you will find uh, that there is a banner that you can click. And this card is there, this commitment card. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go right now. I want you to grab this commitment card. I want you to look at it. And and we're just going to kind of work through this. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we... We are going to engage. Here's the thing you have to understand. The level of your growth is going to determine by the level of your engagement. Let me say that again. The level of your growth is going to be determined by the level of your engagement. This campaign will do nothing for you if you don't engage. Thank you for that week. Amen. Uh, uh, at least uh, Uncle Lou is with me. Thanks, Louie. Uh, uh, nobody else is. Well, you know, not even my wife said amen there. And I, I'm really surprised about that. But uh, if you want to go deeper, if you want to go further, then you're going to have to engage on a higher level. And I think it's, it's crucial for us to understand why it is so important in the day and age that we live that we really be united together. Now, do you know that Jesus doesn't even use the word united? As a matter of fact, Jesus uses a much greater, a much deeper, a much harder word. Jesus never prayed for us that the church would have unity. He prayed that the church would be one. How many of you know there's a difference between unity and oneness? And oneness is is a higher level. Why? Because oneness is the same level. Jesus prayed this prayer. This is Jesus' prayer for you. This is Jesus' prayer for me. He said, Father, I pray that they may be one. That they may be what? One. One. Say it again. That they may be what? Online, type out one. Do it right now. One, two, three. 
one. All right? That they may be one. And, and, and if Jesus just left it at that, that would be great. But he, he actually adds a little bit more to it. He said, Father, that they may be one just like you and I, Father, are one. How many of you know there's no separation between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? How many of you understand that? That they are one. There, there is complete community there. There is complete oneness there. There is power there. Why? Because that's why the Bible says in the book of James that even the demons know that God is what? One. And they shudder. So they know that there is power in this place. That's why the enemy of your faith will do everything to break you from the unity and from the fellowship and from the oneness of the body of Christ. I believe in the day and age that we are living, more and more are we going to have to do everything we can in order to fight for unity, in order to labor for oneness, in order to pray for oneness, in order to work towards oneness, in order to, 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 to make sure that we are engaged in it. We are not just a... a, a, a a person standing on the sideline. God wants you to go from observer to a fully committed follower. He wants you to go from just checking things out to truly engaging. And I want you to know the power of the body of Christ is only going to be there available to you once you and I engage on that level when it comes to the things of God. Now, do you have your card ready? I'm talking to you in the building. You have your card ready? Online, maybe you've checked it out already, but uh, let's just look at this. So here's, here's some commitments that we are going to make. Are you ready? Yes. Let's look at them. First of all, uh, we ask you to commit to attend weekly services, whether that be online or in person. So that's just, you know, uh, uh, we, we, you've had a year off from attending services. So come on now. I mean, that's, you know, engage now a little bit. Some of you, we haven't seen you for over a year. So, and that's okay. But remember, we're going to engage. So every week, tune in. Make sure that you tune in from wherever. I mean, here's the beautiful thing about online. Even if you're traveling, you can take a few moments and tune in to what we're saying. Amen? So it, it is going to be great. Secondly, the second commitment I want you to make is to join a small group. And, and you know, small groups is not just a separate ministry we have here at The Rock. Small groups is where it's at. Why? Small groups is where we are known. Small groups is where we are ministered to. Small groups is where we carry out ministry. Small groups is where we are loved. Small groups is takes care of our needs. Small groups helps us, you know, when a, in a church our size, it's crucial for us to be connected in a small group. In a church our size, we need more small group leaders and we need more small groups. Why? Because that's engagement. That's that higher level of community that we need to strive for. It's great to come on a Sunday morning and hear the word, but where can you discuss the word? In small groups, we discuss the word. In small groups, we ask the questions. In small groups, we pray for one another. In small groups, we support one another. In small groups, we live out the community. In small groups, we live out the oneness that Jesus said we ought to be one. And if you've never, if you've never engaged in a small group through this campaign, I want you to try it out. I want you to engage. And, and uh, in a moment, Pastor Lannon is going to explain to us how we can do that. And then thirdly, are you still with me? Uh, we want to encourage you to read the daily devotionals. So here's, here's what I'm doing. I'm writing a daily devotional for every day throughout this campaign. That's a lot of writing. But uh, uh, you know what makes it worthwhile? If somebody reads it. How many of you understand? It's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of engagement, and it's going to be really challenging and really working our way through it. It's a practical way whereby you can engage. It's a practical way whereby you can be looking at it. It's a practical way whereby you can really, every day, it puts you on the same thought that everybody else is. How, how incredible can we have a spirit of unity and oneness when we, when we actually read the same things? We read the same thing. We put ourselves on the same page. Now, if you have another devotional that you're reading, fine. Then read both. Uh, 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 but I want you to read this. I want you to commit in reading the daily devotional seven days a week all the way through the campaign. And uh, I know it will be a blessing because I know the guy who wrote it, he's pretty good. So uh, make sure that you read it. All right. And then uh, uh, at the end of our campaign, we want to give our first fruits offering on Sunday, March 28th. And uh, as many of you know, usually we do our first fruits offering. We did not do a first fruits offering last year, but uh, we are doing our first fruits offering on, on uh, March 28th. And it's a beautiful Sunday. It's actually Palm Sunday. 
So we're going to wave our branches and give unto the Lord. It's going to be just a, a beautiful Hosanna moment. So throughout this campaign, ask the Lord, what is it? And for those of you who don't understand what first fruits are, first fruits is where we are asking the Lord to bless the rest of our giving, to bless the rest of our engagement, to bless the rest of our, of our family. It's the very first. That's why it's not a later thing. It's not a tagged on thing. It's the, it's the same thing of committing a portion of our income and giving it to Him and say, God, you are first and foremost. And you pray about it. There's no coercion here. There's no, oh, well, you know, how much? You, you decide. You pray. You ask God. But just remember what Jesus said. The greater you give, the greater the response. Always remember, if you want to be, if you want a big blessing, you got to give a, thank you, you got to give a big blessing. But anyway, some of you got it, one of two of you did not, but that's okay. Uh, uh, whenever you talk about money, people get nervous, isn't it? So don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Here's the thing that I want you to know. Mature giving people who are generous never get nervous when the pastor talks about giving or generosity. So if you just got nervous, you know where you're at. This campaign is for you to help you grow in this very arena of your life that some of you maybe are holding back on God because you're holding back in fear instead of stepping out in faith and believing God that He will never leave you, never forsake you, that He will always be there for you. He is your Father that cares about you. Can I get a weak amen for that? And then uh, one thing that I'm very excited about, as many of you know, what we do is, uh, this is not just about us growing inward, this is also about our expression of love. So we have our, uh, our love active expression, and our love active expression, I'm so excited about this. Now, uh, maybe some of you got this when you came in, and this also, folks, for those of you that are online, this is also online. But if you didn't get one of these, uh, you can go online, or you can go right outside after service, and you can pick one of these up, and... And it is the Step Up San Bernardino Project Home Key. And uh, they are welcoming home several uh, veterans uh, 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 to, uh, that were homeless uh, into a hotel that they have purchased. And they turned this hotel into, uh, into a facility where people can live. And uh, what we want to do is we want to create a packages, uh, a welcome packages for them. And so there are, there are different things out. So it's really exciting. We can make a practical difference for somebody. So uh, uh, there's a list of stuff. I'm not going to read all of it, but there's a basic hygiene kit that has toothbrush, toothpaste, et cetera, et cetera, in it. And uh, let me just say this. You don't have to buy everything, but if you buy some things and bring it here, then we will put it together. And we'll have a day where we'll get some volunteers in and, and, and we'll put it together. And then we're going to be a blessing uh, to some homeless veterans and uh, uh, then also the children's ministry are making welcome home cards because that's something else you can do if you want to write a, a nice and make a, a nice uh, homemade welcome home card. Don't, don't go buy a card, make a card. Uh, make it special, g give something, and then also uh, create a gift, uh, a gift bag uh, as far as a, a, a gift mug. And you can buy a mug, a packet of hot cocoa, maybe some marshmallows, maybe a box of cookies, and a, la and a lap blanket. And that will all go to these homeless veterans. And I think there are 48 or 47 rooms that they have made available. And uh, so uh, I think the Rock Church can take care of this. How many of you think we can take care of it? Yeah. So uh, I think we can be a blessing and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and deliver that and, and let you know more about it and talk to you about the difference that you have made. So this, that's going to be our expression throughout this campaign. We're going to do an, an expression of love towards our community. Now, if you have your Bibles with me, let's, we're going to go and if you have the communion elements ready, would you take the communion elements uh, today? And uh, um, I want to read for you first out of the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, and uh, we're going to pick it up from the 12th verse, and I'm going to read out of, the, uh, out of the message translation, and I want you to listen to this, and this is kind of like a parlay for us to go into Holy Communion, but also into this campaign. When we talk about to be or not, when we talk about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, especially the first part, we talk about the Beatitudes. It's attitudes that we need to be. It is, it's not... It's not simple sayings. It is profound. We need to understand this, that when Jesus made these statements, they were radical. They were radical statements. They were radical statements within the context that he was speaking, uh, speaking to because people always heard the opposite. And Jesus was laying the foundation of what a person looks like 
that is going to be a person that enhances and have allowed the kingdom of God to live not only through them, but the kingdom of God in them. I know that we sang this morning, open up, uh, you know, uh, and let the, uh, you know, let the light in. But how many of you understand, as a Christ follower, the light should be in already. You need to let the light out. So, so, so if you're not saved today, if you, don't, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, then you need to let the light in. But if you've accepted Jesus, you need to let the light out. And it's very important to understand this. But I want to read this out of Philippians because this will kind of give us a foundation as we go into the series and really help us to, to understand what we are committing to. Watch this. I'm reading out of the message translation. You can follow along or you can check it out on the screen. Uh, listen to this. I'm not saying that I have this all together. Can I have a weak amen for that? Amen. That I have made it. But I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends. Don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal. Somebody type out eye on the goal. Somebody say eye on the goal. Okay, I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running. I'm not turning back. Somebody say I'm off and running. I'm not turning back. Why, why is that? Because I'm reaching out for Christ, because Christ has reached out for me, but also I've got my eye on the goal. Who's the goal? Where God is, beckoning me. I'm, I'm reaching for Christ. I'm reaching with Christ. I'm moving onward with Jesus. How many of you understand this is all about Christ? Now watch this. So let's keep focused on that goal. Somebody say focused. focused. Somebody type out online, focused. And let's say it one more time. Focus. So let's keep focused on that goal. What goal? The goal of becoming like Christ. Those of us who want everything God has for us. Now, let, let, we just a moment ago when I asked you, do you want to be blessed God's way? Many of you said amen, right? And, and here's what, what Paul is writing. He says, hey, if, if you want to get what God has for you, if you want everything that God has for you, you've got to focus on the right goal. You've got to run and you've got to keep on running. Now watch this. This is so, so powerful. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than what? Total what? He says, if you have something else, if you say, well, I'm just going to play the safe. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to just check this out. I'm just going to, you know, water pedal for a little bit. That's all I'm going to do. He says, hey, if that's, if that's your attitude, if that's where you're at, watch this. God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Meaning that the only people who are going to engage in the level and are going to receive what God has for them are the people that's going to be fully engaged, but it's the people that fully see what God has for them. It is the people that are fully focused and it's the people that are totally committed to the purpose. You've got to commit yourself. You, you, you cannot, there is no way, I want to warn you as your pastor this morning, there is no way that you're going to get out what God has for you if you don't commit yourself. We just came off a 21-day Daniel fast. Can anybody remember that? Some of you have had so many hamburgers by now, you don't even remember that you're on a Daniel fast. But if you remember, just a week ago, we closed down the Daniel fast. Uh, we, we wanted you to engage. As, as a body, we have to engage together. How many of you understand we run this together? It's like a, it's like a well-oiled machine. We work together. It's like your body. It works together. When, you're, when one part of your body doesn't function, how many of you know you feel it? Come on now, you feel it. If your heart decides right now it's stopping, how many of you know we are saying goodbye to you? Right? I mean, your heart can't just say no. If your kidneys decide to no longer function, your liver is no longer livering, your kidneys are no longer kidding, I mean, then it's a bad day. Are you with me, somebody? We need every part of our body to function, and that's, what, that's the mindset that I need you to get throughout this campaign, that we are a body, that you are part of this body. You cannot sit on the sideline. We cannot have 10%, 20%, 30% of this body functioning. We need all of this body functioning, whether you are online, on campus. It doesn't matter whether you are physically attending or not physically attending, but you are attending, and you can be attentive to what God wants in your life. He says, God will clear it. Now watch this. Now that we're on the right track, let's what? Yeah. Now that we're on the right track, let's what? Yeah. One more time. Now that we're on the right track, let's what? Yeah. Stay on it. 
Now that you've discovered that this is the way of life, now that you've discovered that Christ is not, is not a half-hearted commitment, now that you've discovered that Jesus is the way to live, that Jesus is your life, that it's Christ in me, the hope of glory, you know, months and months, five months of kingdom living, five months of what the kingdom is about, now that you've discovered who you are and what you are, now that you understand that you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God, now that you understand that you're part of His family, now that you understand that you're part of the body, you can no longer say that you have an excuse. You know that now. And if you know it, you've got to function in the knowledge that you have received already. Stay on track. Look at verse 17. Are you still with me, church? Watch this. Stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running the same course headed for the same goal. Now listen to the beautiful language that the message, uh, the writer of the message uh, paraphrase switches to. Uh, uh, Paul is saying, hey, now watch. You stay on track. He says, but also keep track of those. Somebody say keep track. Keep track, keep track of who? Those you see what? Running, running this what? Same. same course headed for the same goal. So what he is saying, he says now, that's why small groups are so important. He's saying not only, this is not a, 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 being, a being part of the body of Christ, this is not a singular thing. You, you are not just, well, I'm running my race, glory to God, and you know, the rest of the world goes to hell, well, bless them. I'm going to heaven. You know, I'm fine. I know I'm okay. You know, I've got, you know, fire insurance. I'm good. How many of you know it doesn't work that way? Because if you love God, you're going to love what? Your brothers and your sisters. And he say, so what he's saying is, is as we are running this race, we are very much aware of the race that we are running. We are very much focused on that we are running towards Christ. He says, but also what we do, we're observing others as they are running. Why? Because we're all running the same what? Race. We're running the same course. It's the same race. And guess what? Here's the beauty of it. Our goal is the same. The problem with the church is that we are so focused on the role instead of focusing on the goal. We are so focusing on what my role is, and that's true, you need to focus on that, but you also need to remind yourself that you're on a goal. Watch this. There are many out there taking other paths. Mm. Did you hear that? There are many out there taking what? Other paths, choosing what? Other goals and trying to get you to go along with them. So there are, there are people that's going to add to your life, but there are subtractors in your life. And Paul is saying, watch out. He says, you're running a race and someone, somebody is saying, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, what about this? Hey, what about that? And so wh what that is, it's the, how many of you know the same way God brings people in your life, the enemy of your faith brings people in your life? We don't want to talk about that, do we? The same way you, that's why you've got to have a discerning heart and a discerning mind. You've got to discern if somebody's trying to pull you out of something healthy. If somebody's trying to pull you out of something that, is, that you are vibrant in, that you're functioning, you've got to say, well, why? I, I, I'm in a good place. I'm, I'm going towards God's purposes. Why should I get sidetracked? No, I'm, I'm, I'm on. So he says, hey, you, you observe there are people that are running the same. He says, observe them. Watch, watch out for them. He says, but then there are those who will subtract. They, they, they want you because they want you to go along. L let me say this. It's the same thing like gossip. How many of you understand? Gossip always loves an audience. Come on now. Can I get a weak amen? amen? Now watch this. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. So he says, this stuff has happened to you, Philippians. But guess what? i got to warn you again because it's happening again. I want you to know as long as you're alive, there's going to be people that want to get you out of the purpose that God has for you. There's going to be people that want to talk you out of God's purposes because they think they have a better idea than what God has already spoken to you about. Amen. Watch this. All they want is what? Easy street. The big easy is just easy, man. It's easy like Sunday morning. You know, just, hey. Let me tell you easy street sayings. God knows. God understands. God's okay with it. Oh, it's no big deal. What's the big deal? Well, why are those people? They don't, those people are just trying to manipulate you. You know, that's close to being a cult. Yeah, you, oh, you got to be careful. And all little seeds of what? Doubt, sowing in your mind. 
Why? It's trying to pull you out of where God wants to lead you into. Oh, you know, those people don't love you as much as I love you. Oh, you know what? I understand you. They don't. Come on now, somebody. Am I, is this too close to home? I mean, it's like quiet as the grave in here right now. Maybe I, I wasn't even planning on stepping on this, but maybe I should just close the sermon right here, right now, and have an altar call. All they want is easy street. Now watch this. They hate Christ's cross, but easy street is a dead end, dead end street. Those who live there make their bellies their gods, belches are their praise. All they can think of is their appetites. So it's all, about, it's all about my appetite. It's all about what I want. It's all about what fulfills me. Me, myself, and I. It's, you know, what's my dream, my vision, my goal? Mine, 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 mine. It's all about me. And Paul says, no, no, no. You need to understand that when you're part of a body, it's not just about you. It's about the body being healthy. It's about your brothers and sisters working together. It's about going towards the same goal. We are working this together. Man, this is so good. Watch this. Watch this. But there's far more to life for us. But there's far more to life for who? Us. We citizens of heaven. We waiting the arrival of the Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like His own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which He is putting everything as it should be under and around Him. Christ is skillfully weaving us together. All of us from different places. All of us from different backgrounds. He's weaving us together. And when God looks at us, it is a beautiful body that functions. Now when you have that concept and when you truly have a revelation of the body of Christ, when you partake of communion, it takes our communion to a whole nother level. So let's go ahead. And I want you to, to go with me to 1 Corinthians 11. And I want you to open the top of the cellophane and take out the bread. And then you can open up the other ones that will expose the grape juice or however you're doing it at home. Just uh, be prepared right now. But I want to say a few things and I want you to listen. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. And I want you to see everything that I just told you out of Philippians is being reiterated uh, in, in 1 Corinthians. I think there's a lack of understanding in, the, in, in our cultural uh, uh, appropriation of these scriptures. I think there's a lack of understanding. Why? Because here's what we do. We bring our culture and we set our culture over the Word of God. And then we interpret the Word of God from a cultural perspective instead of understanding that, that you don't do that. Here's what you do. You bring the Word of God and you set the Word of God over your culture. You said the Word of God. How many of you know the Word of God is supposed to be above all? The Word of God is supposed to supersede. So if your culture is going in a direction that is not Christ-like, then you have to submit where? To the Word of God, not to the culture. I want you to listen to this. Everything that I just told you, listen to these words because they are going to be absolutely profound. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians eleven seventeen. 17. Now, on this next matter, I wish I could commend you, but I cannot. Because when you meet together as a church family, it is doing more harm than good. How many of you know some meetings are, um, are, are worse than others? Come on now, help me out somebody. How many of you know, Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He says, you get together, but guess what? It's worse. You get together, it's worse. It's not, it doesn't help anybody. Why? Why is he saying that? Watch this. I have been told many times that when you meet as a congregation, divisions and cliques emerge. And to some extent, this doesn't surprise me. Watch this. Differences of opinion are unavoidable. Yet they will reveal which ones among you truly have God's approval. Wow. He says differences of opinion are unavoidable. How many of you understand that? We said that last week. When you are part of a group of people, it's unavoidable that there's going to be some differences. Somebody's going to tick you off. Come on now, somebody's going to say something that's going to offend you. Somebody is going to do something that's going to offend you. Somebody is not going to fulfill some kind of expectation that you have. That's inevitable. Why? Because we are human beings. Help me out, somebody. Now, Paul says, that's inevitable. That's going to happen. He says, but here's the thing. 
He says, they will reveal which ones among you truly have God's approval. What is, what, is, what is he saying? Differences of opinion between believers exposes our hearts. Mature ones will overlook offenses and faults in order to maintain what? The precious oneness, the precious unity of the body of Christ. Immature ones will cause splits, divisions, and cliques around their respective opinions. The ones whom God approves are those whose hearts remain pure in spite of petty differences. You see, we partake communion from our cultural thing, thinking, well, it's just one of those things we do in church. You know, it's one of the sacraments. We, we just do them. But I want to take communion differently today because I want you to understand really what it's about. Because there's a moment of examination that we're going to have to have. Now watch this. I'm going down to verse 23. Are you still tracking with me? Watch this. I've handed down to you what came to me by direct revelation from the Lord himself. The same night in which he was handed over, he took bread and he gave thanks. Then he distributed to the disciples and said, take it and eat your fill. It is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. He did the same with a cup of wine after supper and said, this cup seals the new covenant with my blood. Drink it. And whenever you drink this, do it to remember me. Now watch this, verse 26. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story, proclaiming our Lord's death until He comes. Right now, as we are going to partake of Holy Communion, what are we doing? We are retelling what Jesus did for us. We are, we are reliving and relooking at the cross. We sing Him hang there, His body ripped to pieces and ripped His flesh, being torn like ribbons. We see that marred body of Christ hanging on the cross and we realize that He did that for us. We look at it. We, we, we take of the bread. We see the broken body. We take the broken bread. We remember why He did it. My sin caused Him to hang on that cross. It's not the nails that kept Him there. It is His love for me that kept Him there. And the reason Jesus was there, my sin put Him there. Now watch this. That's an understanding, but there's a deeper understanding. For this reason, somebody say, for this reason. Now come on, say like you mean it. Type it online and let's do it again. One, two, three. For this reason, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in the wrong spirit will be guilty of dishonoring the body and blood of the Lord. So we have to check ourselves, Paul says, and in modern vernacular, he says, check yourself before you wreck yourself. He says, you gotta, you got to check. And he says, watch this. He says, check your attitude. Check your heart. Now, what attitude do I have to check? You know, I love Jesus. I, I know he died for him. But watch this. He's going to tell us. So let each individual first, somebody say first, evaluate his own attitude and only then eat the bread and drink the cup. For continually eating and drinking with a wrong spirit will bring judgment upon yourself by not recognizing the body. Oh, that is so deep. That is so powerful. Paul is saying this. He's saying, you got to understand. We got to evaluate ourselves. We got to look at ourselves. And then we drink. And only after we know that, we are, that, 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 that our hearts are pure. He says, why? Because if we continue to eat and drink with a wrong spirit, it'll bring judgment upon ourselves. Why would it bring judgment? By not what? Recognizing what? Not recognizing the body. Somebody say the body. And if you notice that body there is not capitalized. We recognize the body. What body is he talking about? He's talking about the body of Christ. He's talking about your brother. He's talking about your sister. He's talking about the ones you say you love. He's talking about the ones you say you worship with. He's talking about the ones that he says you are. So now, if you are creating division, if you're gossiping about somebody, if you're talking smack to somebody, if you're talking nonsense, if you have an ill feeling, ill fitting, if you have an emotion towards somebody, if you have some kind of, some kind of animosity towards somebody, if, if there's some kind of relationship that's disjointed, that's broken, he said, you got to understand, you got to check your attitude. Why? Because you are out of order. 
And if you are going to participate with that kind of attitude, until you make that right, you've got to decide before you partake, Lord, that person might not be here, but I forgive them or I pray they forgive me. And if I can, I'll reach out to them and just tell them that I love them. So right now as I partake, right now of your bread, right now as I partake of your body, of your blood, wash me, cleanse me, and make sure that I can make it right. Look at verse 30. I'm not done yet. I'm almost done. This insensitivity is why many of you are what? Come on. This insensitivity is why. Some of you, sometimes you pray, well, you know, why is it not happening for me? Why am I stuck? Why am I not moving forward? Why, why, why? Because you continually have attitudes towards other people. Because you continually have placed yourself and your pride won't admit it. And you're, pride, you're on the right of pride. Well, they were wrong and I'm right. Well, who cares who was wrong and who was right? Why not be righteous? This insensitivity is why many of you are weak. Watch this. Chronically ill. How many of you know that some of the disease that we have in people is because of our attitudes and our hard attitude towards others? Why? Because that's your brother and sister and you're not discerning the Lord's body. They are part of the body. How can the body attack the body and it be healthy? When your body creates a cell that attacks your body, you know that's called cancer. Are you ready for this kind of communion? I want to add something else. This insensitivity is why many of you are weak, chronically ill, and some even dying. Another translation says some even dead. There are people that have died before their time. Because they could not discern the Lord's body. That's what Paul is saying. That's what this is saying. He says you're chronically ill. You have a chronic illness in you. Your doctors can't figure out. You can't figure out. You've done it. You eat healthy. You do all this stuff. But you're a sauerkraut. I'm saying that nice. You have attitude against everybody. You cause division. You sow gossip. You listen to trash. You keep on receiving false accusations against your brothers and sisters. You divide the body of Christ. You break up into different groups. You have your little click. Well, these are my people. Well, I thought all of this are your people. I'm your people. I'm your people because in Christ, there's no longer what? Scythian, barbarian, slave, free. There's no longer Greek. There's no longer Jew. That means the way that we relate to one another is not on any other heritage. Not on our natural heritage, not, not on our background, not on our skin color, not on any of that. I'm not relating to you in any of those levels. I'm relating to you. Why? Because you were washed in the blood and I'm washed in the blood. Neither male nor female. Hello, somebody. That, that, that doesn't throw those things away. But what it means, those things take a secondary seed to who we are in Jesus. I'm not a black Christian. I'm a Christian that happened to be black. If you say, Pastor Andy, you're not black, then you don't know me. I'm going to get an email from that, but that's fine. That's why you're weak. That's why you're ill. And be careful. You might die. You ever had a communion service like this? You should. You should have it. We should tell people the truth. We should stop capitulating and playing in the enemy's territory and understand why the body of Christ cannot function into that beautiful bride that God wants it to be. And that beautiful oneness, that beautiful unity, loving one another, yes, forgiving one another, loading up on, 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 on allowing uh, uh, for one another's faults. It's okay. I'm not breaking fellowship. I'm not leaving this family because somebody made me mad. I'm not. I'm not in it for me. I want to fight for the unity of this church. I want to fight for the oneness of the body of Christ. I'm not going to criticize from this pulpit. You'll never hear somebody criticize another church from this pulpit. Because that's not what we do. That's not how we roll. If they preach Jesus, that's my brother. That's my sister. They might not operate in my style. They might not be the flavor. But it doesn't matter. We are part of the body. That's another level. But right here, right now, Rock Church, you have to be part of this. I'm not done yet. Let me finish. If you do not sit in judgment of others, 
If you do not sit in judgment of others, if you do not sit in judgment of others, if you do not sit in judgment of others, you will avoid judgment yourself. How many of you want to avoid judgment? Stop judging other people. But when we are judged, it is the Lord's training so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So Paul changes the language now to us together as the body. That's why last week we said, or the week before, judgment must begin where? In the house of God. We have to judge ourselves. Isn't it better to judge yourself, get yourself in alignment, than to be judged? Let's now take the bread. I want you, if you're on campus, I want you to bow your heads. If you're online, why don't you do the same? Bow your heads right now. And let's take a moment. And let's evaluate ourselves. Evaluate your attitude towards other people. Weigh, weigh the way that you've treated the body. Because we are about to proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. We're about to remember Jesus and Him alone. Jesus is not divided. Let us not be. Father, we come to You today and we pray if there's anything within us that holds anything against anybody. Even though we try to justify it and they are a brother or a sister, we try to say, yeah, but, yeah, but, Lord, help us to get rid of the buts in our lives. Some of us have such big buts that we can never get to the how. So help us to overcome this ifs and buts and help us to move into the power of the cross. We look this morning to Jesus. We see him on the cross for our sin. We see him on the cross for my brother's sin. Jesus, you forgave my brother that I have an issue with. The same way that you've forgiven me. Lord, you tell us to pray. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. So this morning we pray that we release. Help us to discern your body. Help us to discern the body in which you've placed us. Help us not to break fellowship. Help us not to be in that place of continual weakness of being physically chronically ill and some of us even dying before our time all because we did not do this so help us to do it now reveal to us if that's you would you just pray this prayer with me and maybe you've never accepted Christ in your life then this is a great moment to do that say Lord Jesus Forgive me as I forgive others. I release all of my anger, all of my bitterness, all of my spite, all of my gossip, all of my tongue twisting, all of my deception, all of the attitudes in my heart that say, well, I'm okay. It's them. No, Lord. Forgive me. Help me to discern and create a sensitivity for the weak in my heart and mind. And help me to eat this bread and drink this cup in a worthy way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's go ahead and partake now of the body of the Lord. Then in the same way, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. This is to our king, for our king, through our king, by our king, and in our king. This is the blood that sets us free. This is the blood that gives us access. This is the blood that doesn't cover our sin. It removes it. Thank God for His blood. Right now, let's partake in Jesus' name.
Father, we honor you. We worship you and we give you praise. We pray today as the Rock Church that our hearts be tender before you, open before you. May great grace be our portion. Lead us not a temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. If you believe that, give the Lord a clap offering that he is worthy of today. Well, come on, you can do a better job than that.